Everybody praise the Lord. It's a joy to be with you. I'm so glad I'm here with you and to plant the seed of greatness in your life. Impact in your life. Rising above, going beyond anything you ever dreamed about. You dare to dream. You dare to do. And you dare to reach the destination. Let's pray. Father, reverently we come to you. Such a day like this, when you touch, transform, change the destiny of everyone for the better. Lord, I pray every word, every sentence will bring impact to every life in Jesus' name. We're beginning at the first rung of the ladder today. And we're going to climb and climb to the height you have ordained for everyone. Here, everywhere, in our country, in our continent, Africa, beyond to the west, everywhere. Take everyone up, 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 higher in Jesus' name. It is done. We thank you because there will be a realization. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can see that in the blessing of the Lord. We're coming to Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. If thou can only believe, number one, you believe in God, the creator of the whole universe and your own creator. If you can only believe in him, all things are possible to him, to her who believes. Number two, it's goodness that God is good. He never does evil. If you believe in his goodness, all things are possible to him who believes. If you believe in his grace, the grace unlimited that takes the lowest to the highest, the grace unlimited that takes the poor to the height of prosperity. If thou canst only believe his grace, all things are possible to him who believes. If you believe in your goal. When you have a goal, if you have a double mind, can I, can I not, should I, shouldn't I? If you have a goal and you focus on that goal, you believe in that goal, you believe that you and the goal, you are one, inseparable. He that believeth, he has a goal and he believes in that all things are possible to him that believeth. You believe his guidance. He guides us. He guides us. And he guides us to the sin that will follow and to get our destiny. If thou canst only believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. If you believe in growing, in growth, if you believe that you have not reached your climax. If you believe that you are growing and you are going to grow to that higher level and there is nothing that will stop you. He that believeth, you believe that there is growth and that you are marked for growth 
and you are destined for growth. To him that believeth, all things are possible. Jesus has told us about the Almighty God, about his greatness. If you believe in his greatness, there is nothing he cannot do. There's nothing he cannot do in your life. There's nothing he cannot do in my life. There is nothing and there is no height he cannot take me to, take you to. If you believe in his greatness, all things are possible to him that believeth. Readjust your life. Readjust your concept and readjust your disposition and believe you are going up. If you believe, you will pray. If you don't believe, you won't pray. I believe. Number one, I pray. Number two, I believe. So, I plan. If I truly believe in God, if I truly believe in his goodness, if I truly believe in his grace, if I truly believe in the Goal. If I truly believe in his guidance, if I truly believe in growth, if I truly believe in the greatness to come, I pray, I plan, I prepare, I prepare. You prepare yourself if the farmer only prayed, but he didn't prepare the seed, he didn't prepare, cultivate the land, nothing will come out. I believe, so I prepare. I believe, so I pursue. You pursue because you believe that is the destination there, that is the goal there, and you are a go-getter. Goal getter you are going to get it. Because of that, I pursue. I believe, so I persevere. What if Joseph had given up? No use because nobody supports me. Nobody agrees with me. But I perceive. Number six, I pay the price for the price. I pay the price. It may be doing exercise. It may be running every morning. It may be that you tax yourself and you say, people like us, if that is where I am going, there's a price to pay. And I believe so. I paid the price for the price. And then I believe so. I possess. I came to talk to possessors. You will possess. We're looking at three things. Number one, number one, the boundaries of limitation for the natural youth. What is the boundary? What makes the limitation for a youth, a natural youth? And so he cannot go beyond that. The bounds, the fence, and the perimeter that holds him down and he cannot go beyond number two is the breaking of limits for newborn youths. The breaking of limits for the newborn youth. Number three is the breakthrough. It's coming. The breakthrough beyond limitations as noble youths. Let's come to number one. Number one, the boundaries of limitation for the natural youth. Now, natural people, men, women, boys, girls, natural people, the people who do not have anything added from heaven to them, or except what mama, papa are giving them through the genes and the chromosomes, if that's all you have, and you are natural, you have boundaries, you have limitation. Uh, let's look at Romans here now. Romans chapter 7, reading from verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, natural. The way I came out, from my mother, 
and the thing I carry, I'm carnal. And it says, sold under sin. Look at verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, I can set goals. I'm reaching there. I'm going there. It says, what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that's what I do. Then in verse 16, it says, Even I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. What's my problem then? Verse 17. In verse 17, now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. A man that is natural. The woman that is natural. There are a lot of things, of course, that we do. For eyes, we we'll walk about, we we'll move about, we we'll look, we we'll see. We even understand some things, but when it goes beyond that limit, we're lost. The thing that ought to make us arise and move up to the mountain top. That's what we're looking for. And that is what we lack. It says, it's not me. There is something that dwells in me. That when I will arise and then rise to higher ground, that thing like the force of gravity pulls me down. Uh, let me quickly tell you seven things that hinder us. The seven things that limit us, the cause of limitation. Number one is the corruption of life. We come to this line and we'll see that the order of the day and the thing is the corruption in the world. Anywhere we go, the corruption is there that holds us down. The corruption of life. Number two is the contamination of the lawless. Any community you go, there are lawless people there. They don't have any goal. They don't have any mind to succeed. They don't have anywhere they are going. They are there. They are there. In society, they are there. They are always there. And you can be contaminated by them. That even though you had high hopes before. And you are going through, you are going to get to that destination. If you are surrounded by those people, lawless people, there is the contamination of the lawless. Number three is the coldness of the lukewarm. The coldness of lukewarmness. Any excitement you have, you come from a meeting like this, and with everything you have, there's an excitement, and there is a hope, and there's a desire, and I want to get there. I learned of Mr. So and so, he got there. Mrs. So and so, she got there. The God of grace and the God of heaven, he will help me as you come out and you meet, uh, you know, the cold lukewarm people they don't have anywhere they are going they don't have anything they are going to achieve and they say ah, what happened to you where are you coming from book 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 reading 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 planning sketching and doing all those things what happened they want to bring coldness to your excitement they will not succeed number four is the constitution of laziness. The constitution. Uh, you understand constitution? Uh, that, that's our mind. That's our habit. That's our life. And it's like we like to sit down. We like to browse the internet. We like to see all those pictures and everything uh, in the social media. We want to listen to useless news that doesn't concern us. And that constitution of laziness does not allow us to concentrate on the essentials of life. Those things bring limitation into our lives. Number five is the companionship with loafers. Loafers. They are here and there. They are 
up and down, they are to and fro, and they have nothing doing. They have nothing achieving. They come to knock on your door. Are you there? Are you there? Uh, have you heard? Then they begin that uh, conversation. We must have a goal. And when you think of goal, you're thinking of in 10 years time, uh, here is where I want to be. Here is what I want to achieve. And 10 year goal, you have to break that down to five year slot and the five years you have to break down what do i do this year one year goal and monthly goal and weekly goal and daily goal so that i do today what i need to do that will get me to the next day i do this week what i need to do that will get me to the month i do this month what i need to do that will make me achieve what i need to achieve for the year and i am measuring measuring smart goals i am measuring them i'm seeing that i achieve the daily one i achieve the weekly one realizable realistic steps that i take and then it is time tested and it is time because i'm aiming at 10 years five years one year one month we need to do that but if you are in companionship with loafers how are you going to make that number six the counterfeit of love love is a great word but you know anything that comes into the hands of a man who is black on the inside black on the outside any good thing that comes to the hand of a dirty person they turn that thing into something undesirable there is counterfeit money counterfeit currency there is counterfeit love that people say i love you i love you tell the truth you're lost after her that's not love that's counterfeit and what makes people to stop that they cannot look at their goals anymore and they cannot focus on their goals anymore as they're growing up and their goals should be growing up for them they have the counterfeit of love which is loss and now number seven the covenant with lots of losers there are people that make themselves lords. They call themselves by different names on different campuses. They call themselves by different names in different communities. Actually, they are gangs. Actually, they are secret cults. Actually, they are in the power, in the throes, in the claws of the power of darkness and they are lords over losers they make themselves lords over the people that lose in life and if you get into covenant with the lords of losers you are gone but today you come back it is done i will see you on the top number two number two we're looking at the breaking of limits for new born youths the breaking of limits for new born youths the lord makes the new born youth higher if you are born again you're higher your brain is not affected by marijuana you should do better your mind is not clogged with what let things night clogs you should do better you have more time on your hand that you can spend and do something great because the other people the other young people a lot of things make demand on their time and now that you are born again i'm happy to walk with you I'm happy to say this is the way what he therein and by the grace of God others have got there. 
you are the next on the line in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 therefore if any man let me say if any youth let me say if any boy let me say if any girl if anyone be in christ he is a new creature old things are passed away old regrets a passed away. Old failures are passed away. Old hindrances are passed away. The old life. If there is a little hurdle, only six inches high. Old time will stumble on the hurdle of six inches. Old life, if there was a little hurdle, only one foot was stumble and fall. But now, as we become new, new strength, new ability, the hurdles are still there, old hurdles, but we're new, new strength. And we have a, a new jumping strength. We overcome the hurdles now. Because now all things have become new in your life. Yeah. Your thinking is now new. Yeah. Your aspiration is now new. Yeah. And the passion inside you to be what God has created you to be, that is now new. In Galatians chapter 6, reading here from verse 15, it says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature, a new creature. The Lord will wash you thoroughly. Now, what new creation when he says a new creature it's a new creation what new creation are you going to have now and then that will take you to the place the lord has ordained for you amen, amen. Yeah. number one new desires new desires you know there were things were desired when you were a little baby you desired toys if you were still desiring that at 20 that's strange that's strange the toys of the little life when i was a child i thought as a child i desired as a child i moved and the child but now that i become a man i think of other things number one new desires number two a new direction a new direction you see there are many roads in the city there are rough roads and there are good roads now that you are a new creature. What do you have? You have a new direction. All those inventors, what direction did they follow? All those good godly men and women, what direction did they follow? All those achievers, what direction did they follow? A new direction. Number three is a new diligence. A new diligence. There are many uncompleted buildings in every town. You know why? The builders were not diligent to see their construction to the end of the building. And there are many lives like that. They start something good, but they don't continue. They're not diligent. They're not firm in their purpose. But now, the quality of the new creature is that we have a new diligence. This good thing that has started in your life, you will be diligent, you will carry on. You will not be up and down to and fro that you cannot do something to the very end. You know, you start a course, 
C-O-U-R-S-E. You start a course, and then uh, after reading a few chapters of the books, you pack up. That's not diligence. You start a good project, and you funded it. And then, uh, after you spent almost a fortune, there's something that shifts your mind to another thing. That's not diligence, but you have uh, something. You have a decision. You have a desire. And you have uh, the determination that you are getting through. I'm going through. I'm going through. Whatever happens, I am going through. You are going through in Jesus' name. Amen. Number four is the new dedication to duty. You know, we'll not always love duty. We'll not always enjoy duty. The enjoyment will be at the end of the achievement. But whether we enjoy it or not, the original excitement when we go to that situation, you understand? Uh, let me illustrate with our students who get, you know, you've uh, written the exam and you, you were eager. And then you saw that you passed. And now you are admitted to the college, to the institution, to the university. What excitement you have. On the first day, you enter in there, you have excitement. Now you start the classes and what you are hearing in the first class I never heard of that they never taught me that in my secondary school and now I thought the mind will go from the known to the unknown this is totally strange and different you are not the one to lecture the lecturer you are the one to stay there and say this is what is before me I must take this and run with it you must not allow the excitement you had at the beginning when you entered you must not allow that excitement to die down you have a new dedication to duty number five is a new dynamite a new dynamite uh, there must always be a dynamite inside you that whatever is coming there and is building up with stratas and eventually will be a rock and you'll not be able to move on there's a dynamite on the inside that will blow everything discouraging blow everything away from your life so that as you're moving on you move to the next level there is a second degree dynamite and you move to the next level there is a third degree dynamite and you move to the fourth level and there is a fourth degree up to degree four dynamite in your life that no matter where you are and no matter the thing that is building up that could weigh you down there is always an appropriate dynamite that will blow everything away it will start today we're coming to point number three now point number three the breakthrough beyond limitations as noble use beyond limitations how do we come to that let's look at the example of jesus in john chapter 4 reading from verse 34 in john chapter 4 reading from verse 34 jesus says unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work my will my plan my decision my aspiration my joy my satisfaction is to do the will of him that sent me the father that sent him had set the goal had revealed his will had showed his plan and purpose and he said i align with that i agree with that i go with that and to finish his work he woke up every morning 
And then he went to a solitary place to pray. And he was asking, how far have I gone in the work he gave me to do? How much is left to finish the work he gave me to do? You wake up every morning and you ask yourself, what did he give me to do? What goal, what purpose, what plan, what will did he have for me? How far have I gone? How much remains? You look at if there are different projects you are handling. Project A, how far to the end? Project B, how far to the end? Which one needs more resources? Which one needs more attention? And which one needs more concentration? And which one needs more supervision? You're looking at that in your life so that you will know how far you are to the finishing of the work. Now, it's not just that we finish the period. You know, many people can finish. We are supposed to be there for three years, and you spent two years already. And it's not just saying it remains one year. It remains one year. No. The thing you have to do for those three years, how much of those things have you accomplished? That's what you mark. That's what you measure. And that is what you want to go through. And Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. You will finish. Yeah. We're looking at the word of God, the most in our lives. It tells us in, uh, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, verse 30, it says, And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? There is a must in our lives. Look at uh, chapter 14, verse 22. In chapter 14, verse 22, it tells us there, it says, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must you see in our lives eh, there must be some very important compulsory things not optional that must be done he says we must through the through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of god you will enter into kingdom victory into kingdom triumph into the kingdom as a conqueror in jesus name must you need to write this down m u s t minimize unprofitable speech thoroughly if we're going to do what the lord has assigned there is a must m u s t you minimize unprofitable speech thoroughly and number two now mortify unclean sensuality truthfully they take time anything that takes your thought takes time anything that takes and seizes your mind takes time anything that will monopolize the function of your brain all those things they will hinder you because you have only one brain only one mind only one heart only one pursuit and once that is divided you are not going to achieve much therefore you mortify unclean sensuality truthfully number three is to maximize undeniable success trajectory success trajectory that is the trajectory the path that leads us to success maximize that i did that it succeeded how did i do that and the how you did that maximize that repeat that number four master uncontrollable self totally master uncontrollable self 
totally. You see, that's the most in our lives. Something is happening there. And it's none of my business. It's none of your business. And the people to take care of the thing there, uh, they are there. And they're already looking into that. But there's this uncontrollable self. I must be there. What's happening there? What's happening there? And then uh, you leave your work. By the time you come back to that work, you have lost connection with the, uh, with the progress you ought to make. Number five is to model on debatable salvation transparently. The salvation you have, you model that or the salvation in the Bible. And you do that transparently and the Lord will assist you in Jesus' name. What the most in your life, the most in my life, in your life, number six, maintain upward steps tenaciously. Not that you take two steps forward and three steps backward. Not that this week the achievement, this is commendable. And this is wonderful because you've taken three steps forward and then the following week in your time of resting and time of, you know, a kind of uh, dissipating uh, all your energy and everything you take four steps backward. No, you are maintaining upward steps tenaciously. And now number seven, uh, motivate on steady subordinates transformationally the people around you it's not only that you are successful your life inspires them your life uh, makes them to have uh, aspiration and ambition and they say as i look at you know he never does any redundant thing he never does any un unimportant thing he never does anything uh, that you will say well yes it's time of wisdom it's time of foolishness he does everything that moves him forward, he motivates me. He encourages me. He inspires me that at the God who has helped him will help me. You will become an example to many other people. A light bearer to many other people. An encouragement to achieve for many other people. People will come to you and say, tell me the secret of your life and just looking at you they will get the secret and everything you have learned today they have motivated us we should not be unsteady anymore and we who are subordinates will now come to the top i must i must I must, and there will be a breakthrough beyond limitations in your life in Jesus' name. Why don't we rise up now and let the heavens know and let the heavens hear that we have heard something and we're taking that thing out of this place a must in my life a must in your life a duty a devotion and diligence in your life that you will sail through in jesus name open your mouth and talk to the lord in prayer if there's anything you need to repent of anything you need to repair Anything you want to readjust, tell the Lord, Lord, help me. You believe. You believe in God. You believe in his goodness. He is good to all. He is good to all. You believe in his grace. His grace is available for you and for everyone. You believe in the goal, the goal he has set before you, which you have aligned with. You believe you are now a goal getter. You believe in his guidance. He will guide you with his word, with the spirit. 
it will guide you with your conscience your conscience it will guide you now address the most in your life you minimize unprofitable speech thoroughly completely mortify unclean sensuality truthfully you maximize Undeniable success trajectory. The Lord has answered your prayer. The Lord has answered your prayer. Say it now. The Lord has answered my prayer. The past is forgotten. The past is forgiven. A new thing starting in every life today in Jesus' name. Welcome, brother. Welcome, sister, to the high, limitless achievement that he has for you in life. Raise up that hand, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we well, thank you for the revelation you have given us. We are asking, O oh Lord, in your life, we we'll begin today in Jesus' name. Anything in the past that will hinder, that will hold us down, that will limit what you have ordained for our lives, Lord, we pray. By the blood of Jesus, wash them away in Jesus' name. Do something new in every life. I pray, Lord, no regrets anymore. No looking back anymore. No sorrows anymore. We pray that you renew us from the inside to the outside in Jesus name take every sin away take every sickness away bring success significance satisfaction to every life in Jesus name I pray every life will be pleasing to God and pleasing to heaven. That our pursuit will get to that destination, that destiny that the Lord has earmarked and ordained for everyone in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, make your people, everyone without exception, to quit the past. Yeah. To focus on the future. Yeah. And everything that is needed from heaven, from earth, grant to everyone. Yeah. Make a success of every life. Yeah. Beyond the limitations of the past, take us through. Yeah. Take us up in every life I pray Lord no regrets anymore no looking back anymore no sorrows anymore we pray that you renew us from the inside to the outside in Jesus name take every sin away Take every sickness away. Bring success, significance, satisfaction to every life in Jesus' name. I pray every life will be pleasing to God and pleasing to heaven. That our pursuit will 
get you that destination, that destiny that the Lord has earmarked and ordained for everyone in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, make your people, everyone without exception, to quit the past, to focus on the future. And everything that is needed from heaven, from earth, grant to everyone. Make a success of every life. Beyond the limitations of the past, take us through. Take us up. And take us on until everyone, without exception, gets to that destination of life that is desirable, that is pleasurable, that is wonderful, that is joyful and happy in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done in your life.